okay so let's continue uh, so now we just saw how to create this kind of point map but of course we have many different kind of geometries available so lines would be one of them uh, so let's continue and, and see how we can create this kind of line with with the metro line Helsinki that that's basically interactive in in here so again it's really a similar procedure as before again we need to get the uh, coordinates out of these uh, geometric objects and basically uh, insert them as, as a list of values so we want to get this kind of output from our geometries so let's see what, what can be done to achieve that so first of all let's do the same tricks read the data and so on so in this case what we want to read is the metro shade file so in the data uh, directory or the file folder that we downloaded there is this metro.shape and we can read that in so let's see metro gbd read file and metro fd is the file path that we want to read uh, hmm. yeah okay there's some weird behavior there but but anyway now we have this metro line strings inside here we can again take a look how it looks by plotting it so indeed we have this kind of Helsinki metro line this is the old metro now we have much longer and cooler metro that goes to the neighboring municipality as well but this is the short fork as they say uh, describing the shape of the metro uh, so uh, we have these line string objects in our data uh, and what we want to do again is indeed that we want to get the coordinates so first thing that we want to do uh, similarly as before let's create a function where we basically return a list of geometries uh, from those or sorry list of coordinates from those geometries so let's create get line chords that kind of function that again get the row and geom and chord type as the parameters so same ones as before let's add some uh, doc string here saying that this returns list of coordinates x or y uh, of a line line string geometry like this so in a similar manner as before we say that if the coordinate type equals to x then we return a list of uh, the row coordinates uh, and how we can get that so we just say that from that row and from that geometric column having the uh, shapely objects uh, we can say that from that geometry there is this chords attribute that basically contains all the coordinates and inside there we have the x and y coordinates and basically the first list uh, from those contains the uh, so first one is x and the second one is y as we have here so the first array basically contains the x values and the second array contains the y values so we specify that from those arrays take the first one 
so that we have the x coordinates out of there. So this is basically it and with this list function we basically uh, convert those values into into a list of coordinates. Then uh, as the second uh, conditional statement we said that if the chord type equals to y so we do the same tricks uh, but in this time instead of uh, returning the first array we uh, return the second so the y array from here so this is all we need to do to actually get the x and y coordinates of lines and, and return them as lists so let's define this uh, function and then we can start start using it and we use it so extract the x coordinates so within the metro we create a column called x and we use the metro dot apply so similar function as before and now we pass this info, uh, information to this get line chords function and we specify that the geometry is basically the well the geometry column here having the shapely objects and then we have the chord type uh, parameter and as we want to have the x axis so we specify the chord type to be x and the final thing again we need to specify the axis equals to one so that we go row by row reading our data frame so now <coughs> if everything works okay i can run this with by pressing f9 and now we should have this kind of new column called x which has the x coordinates from each of uh, how does it go yeah so each node in that line so all the x coordinates are in in one list and then we do the same thing for the y coordinates so metro y equals to metro apply and we just change the chord type to y and run the thing and now we should have the same but with y coordinates so now now we are kind of again in a similar uh, kind of phase as, as before so we have the geometry we extracted the x and y coordinates and now what we want to do is that we want to drop the geometry column so that we can actually save the html file as an interactive map so let's again uh, make a copy of the original data frame so i call it m underscore df metro dot drop and what i want to drop from there is the column geometry and it's x is one and i create a full copy of, of that and now we should have this mdf dot head so we have the x and y coordinates but without the geometry the next thing that we wanted to do is to specify the uh, column data source so we need to convert this data frame into this uh, specific bokeh specific data type called column data source uh, and we needed to use this so from bokeh models import column data source so let's do that so from bokeh dot models import column data source and then i run this and now we can say that the metro source so where the data is so create a column data source uh, 
and that we were able to do just by passing the column data source or using that and passing the m underscore df into that one and now as a result we have the m source column data source in our ipython console so uh, now we are ready to actually do the actual plot and how can we do that so uh, basically uh, again we need to initialize the figure first so again i create p equals to figure and again we want to from bokeh plotting import figure and save so from bokeh dot plotting import figure and save so we need to have those to be able to create this figure object and we can add a title and we can call it a map of the well let's call it old Helsinki Metro because it doesn't have the Western Metro yet oops that was wrong so then I just execute this one and then uh, we want to add the line so add the metro lines into the map uh, and how we can do that so previously we used this um, da, 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 this circle function or object uh, now what we want to use here is that we have this multi-line so you can create lines from by using that object and in a similar manner we need to specify which column contains the x coordinates so x which column contains the y coordinates well y and then we need to specify the source so we read the data from this m source column data source object that we just created uh, we can specify the color well let's say that it's red and we can specify what is the line width of that uh, line metro line let's say that it's three so this is how we can create uh -huh. if there was a typo uh yeah for sure um let's see okay uh multi line um here we have that so let's see what kind of parameters do we have line color line width ticker line alpha line cap line dash uh, dash offset line join so yeah it seems to be i guess it's this line dash uh, so always if you don't know the place where you look for the information is to go for the documentation and find out from there so if the developers have done their work right you should find everything from there uh, unfortunately that's not always the case but usually with these more stable uh, packages you should find everything you need from there yeah so now we created the multi-line uh, with the metro lines and let's specify the output file path so out fp equals to this one uh, copy and paste it here and then um, I call it metro map dot html like this and then we save it with the save function as and 
where do I save it? So we save the P, so that figure into that file path. And again, it produced some warnings, but we don't care about that. But now we have the Metro map in here and ta-da. Now we have this kind of interactive Metro map available with the wheel zooms and stuff. So as we can see from here is that, for example, here, it seems that on the other direction, the Metro makes this kind of uh, route and then other way like this, or then this is just an error in the di digital. Yeah, might be more probable, but it could be the <laughs> other way. Yeah, so anyway, that's what we, we have. So now we have the uh, capabilities of putting lines on map, putting, putting the uh, points on map. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do? I guess we are done with that. So let's create a map where we have polygons and we have points and we have the metro. So this is the kind of where things become useful so that we can actually visualize some, some information like this. And after that, we will see how we can actually share these files in, in GitHub. Good. So let's start the final expedition so interactive plot with polygons lines and points uh, yes i want to save it to, 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 to make sure the code here so poly line point okay map so again we want to import from bokeh dot plotting import save import figure from bokeh dot models import what did we want to import from there um, Yeah, the column data source came from there. Column data source. And then we want to use again the GeoPandas to read the data like this. And then we want to specify the file paths. So what we wanted to do here is that we use the accessibility information from this file so travel times to railway station so let's say that grid fb equals to that one and then the actual file name and then the other one there is a metro file path was called metro.shape and the last thing that we want to have is the roads and we can read it from there and then read the data Let's just do it this now fairly quickly so that we can actually spend time on explaining stuff Grid FB Metro Metro FB and Roach equals to Roach FP. Now we should have hmm, something interesting. 
uh, should have those available. Uh, again, as before, we did in the static map. So what we want to do is that we want to get the coordinate reference system to be the same in each one of those. So from the first materials are now just copy and paste from the static maps script and put those in place here. So we take the grid, the, the coordinate reference system information from the grid and then we reproject the roads into that same coordinate reference system and the metro so that they are now the same in each one of these. So it should be this EPSG uh, 3067. Yes, and metro like this. Good. Uh, then what we want to do uh, is that we can basically use the uh, previous functions that we created to get the coordinates of the points and get the coordinates of the metro uh, polylines. But now what we want to do uh, still is to create a function to actually uh, get the polygon coordinates. So again, the same parameters. So the row, geom, and the chord type is what we use. So this function, what it does is that it returns the coordinates x and y of the edges of a polygon exterior. So uh, now because we are having polygons and we indeed we want to have the kind of uh, exterior nodes of those polygons uh, so we need to basically first to parse the exterior from those polygon geometries that we actually pass in here. So we set the parse the exterior. So exterior equals to row and the geometry that we passed it and then dot exterior. So this is how we can get the uh, exterior out of there. And what does it Oh yeah, like this. Then we continue. If uh, the chord type equals to x, then we get the x coordinates. So return, and again we want to return a list of values. So list. And from that exterior of that polygon, we want to get the coordinates x, y, and the first, which is the x coordinates. So we want to have an array of those and convert that into a list. And tell if the chord, chord type equals to y. Well, then we get the y coordinates. And this is just similar as with the, when getting the coordinates of the polyline. Uh, but now we basically are working with the polygon information, uh, polygon geometries. So this is what we need to do. And we can just run it. And now we have the polygon coordinates. Uh, what I will do now is that I basically, we have these three different functions. So I just copy and paste those into the same script. So now we have to get line chords, get poly chords, and we want to get the point chords as well. 
So now we have the three basic types of uh, geometries covered in our data. What we don't have here is that you might have multi geometries. So you might have multi poly polygons, multi line strings, multi points. And those also need to be considered quite often when working with data. There is actually on the web pages, there is a whole section of advanced plotting with Bokeh. Uh, I might still update this site a bit, but basically there is the basic information. Uh, yeah, as you can see, there is a bit of uh, missing stuff yet, so I will update it. But basically what we have here is a set of functions that I have written for you that you can actually apply to get uh, these coordinates from any type of geometry. So it actually handles those multi-geometric objects and basically makes a list of, uh, of those. So we don't cover this now during the lecture, but you can go ahead and take a look and actually use these functions for your own work when, when, when doing, doing uh, interactive maps with, with Bokeh. You might end up having problems with the multi-geometries multi when, when working some other data that, than what was provided here. So that's why I provided that page for you. Uh, but now we can still continue with these as we don't have any multi-line geometries. So now we can basically use these three functions and work with those. So what we again want to do is that we want to apply. So now I maybe just copy and paste to save some time. Just time here. Here. Yeah. So what we want to do is that we want to get the polygon X and Y coordinates. We want to get the coordinates of the line and we want to get the coordinates of the points. So now I just copy and paste it here so that it doesn't take so long time to write it. And then I just execute these. Um, Metro. Oh yeah, I don't want to have the rows. I want to actually have the points. So that was what we were doing here. Uh, yeah, so we wanted to point the plot the addresses. Uh, so I just change this now. So addresses and let's say, well, let's call it points as is in the material addresses fp and then I want to do these points equals to points.crs so minor change is so now we have points.head so yeah indeed we have the addresses here and that is what I want to do so yeah we have the metro line and then we have the points so that we have all three different kind of uh, geometric objects covered in here. So um, next what we want to do is that da, 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 we want to take a look of the grid data that we have. There is some, so now we can see that we indeed have these uh, X and Y coordinates as lists. Uh, then we want to uh, visualize the travel times. So indeed, this is what we want to have. And in the travel time data, uh, there is uh, information about the, uh, just show it. So the data comes from the accessibility research group and here is the basic description so this is the data that we are using this is a bit two years old data but basically 
So there are some no data values that are uh, defined with minus one value. So we want to basically change, replace those with some large value uh, and, and so on. And from this page, you can actually find all the definitions for different columns if you are not familiar with them. Uh, so let's do so that we basically, uh, so the grid, so these columns might contain values minus one. So we want to replace that with, for example, 999, which is a large number. So let's say that replace no data values. Well, they are actually no data. Replace minus one values with 999. So we can say that grid equals to grid dot replace. And what do we want to replace? Well, value minus one and with what? Minus 999. And now we should have grid values where there should be some uh, 999s in it. Let's see if we have grid. So this is a lower list. Yeah, well, yeah, here we have some 999s here. So indeed there was, was some no data in the file. Yeah, so it does it for the whole data frame at the time. Uh, you could, of course, do it only for, for one column at the time, uh, just by specifying. Uh, hmm, let's no, I think you did that. No. Yeah, I think, yeah. And you might also specify in the replace function. Uh, Yeah, so you can actually specify in the replace function as well. There is a explanation here. So you can specify that at column A, uh, replace value B with none. So this is quite useful. So you can actually specify the columns that you want to use to make the replacement and then add another dictionary inside there where you actually specify the old value and the new value. So that might be handy, handy to use as well. Uh, but yeah, this does it for the whole data frame at the time, uh, which is okay in this case, but in some other occasions you don't maybe want to do that. But now I know the data and, and the travel time shouldn't be less than zero. So it's safe to assume like this. Uh, then uh, what we want to do next is that we want to classify uh, this uh, travel time data. So here we have the public transport rush hour travel times to the central railway station. So let's create a kind of classification where each of these colors represent five minute kind of interval. So that, yeah, each zone is like five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 and, and so on to the railway station. So what, how we can do that uh, is that we basically create a classifier uh, of our own. So classify the travel times uh, with five minute intervals. And how we can do that uh, is that we can Again, we can take use of the range function that was uh, shown to you already uh, in September, I guess, so quite a long time ago. Uh, so let's say that we create breaks. So what are the kind of limits for each, each of the classes, travel time classes? Um, this is a trick how you can basically create a loop inside a list uh, that you use. Uh, I will explain it. Uh, I think we already, I showed this one 
time earlier already. But what we can do is that we specify that start from number five, uh, continue until 200 and make five uh, minute steps. So what we are doing here is that we are iterating over values from five to 200 and skip so the number so that we only have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 and so on. So this will basically create a list of values. I will show it. So now we have this breaks and what the breaks actually contains is indeed it's a list of values with 5, 10, 15 and, and so on. So this is what we want to use to actually classify our data. And uh, how do we how can we use these values to do the classification? So we can use the Pycel uh, classif classifiers to do it easily. You could also do this by creating your own function. But uh, the Pycel actually contains quite neat, easy to use function to create your own, uh, own classification schemes. So import Pycel as Yes, we can do it like this and then uh, what I want to do is that again I want to create so initialize the classifier so this is something that we did maybe last week or a week before that uh, so let's say that create a classifier equals to PS and now instead of using for example natural breaks that is something that we, we used before. I can specify that PS is user defined. So actually I can define the, the method how I want to classify the data. And I said user defined dot make. And then in here I specify what are the bins. So what are the kind of class breaks that I want to use. So those breaks are actually this list. So every five minutes I have a new class. So I set that the bins equals to the breaks, which is a list of values. So now I execute this and now I should have a classifier, which is this Pycel map classify uh, kind of object. And now uh, what we want to do is that indeed we want to classify the travel times travel times by public transport in rush hour or during during rush hour like this and basically well pt column so what is the column that we want to use? Well, it's the PT underscore rush. So rush hour, which is R, and then uh, travel time, which is T and T travel time. So this is the column that we want to use. Uh, and then we do the actual classification. So this is something that we did um, last week. Yes. So I call PT classification. So in here, uh, I basically said that grid, uh, and in here, what is the column that I want to classify? So from that, take the column PT RTT. So it's like this. Actually, I do it just to make it even more to easy to read uh, I said that classification columns is a list of columns that I want to classify and here I insert the PT column that has this value and basically now I set that grid classification columns. So take only those columns that are specified in here, uh, like this. And then uh, those 
should be classified. So we can use this apply function again. And what do we want to apply? Well, it's this classifier with the user defined classes that we specified earlier. So let's say that apply classifier. So classify the values. This might be a bit uh, not so easy to follow, but hopefully you just can get an idea. Okay, my battery is running low. So what we had here is that we have uh, different classes, class values for, for each of these. Now what we want to do is to rename that uh, column and, and basically take this classification back to the original data. So let's say rename column so pt classic.columns equals to and then give some good name ptrtt user defined so it's ud and like this and then let's join the classification back to the original data so we have the grid and uh, let's say that grid equals to grid.join and what do we want to join back there is this PT classif uh, data frame that we just created with the Python classifier. And after this, we should have a new column in our data frame with this public transport rush hour travel time classes in here. We can take a look of what kind of values do we have there. P T R T T U D value calls. So it seems that we have in class number eight we have most of the cells. Class number nine we have the second most of the cells and so on. So this is what we basically did so that we have in total some 38, 40 different classes in our data. Now I will plug in my power so that you need to stop earlier than you want. Yes. Yes. Yep. So now we have classified information and next what we want to do is that now we have those three different uh, uh, data frames. So we have the metro lines, which is this, and then we have the points, which is this, and then we have the grid that I don't want to plot now because it takes some time but we have the travel time information in the grid. Uh, so next step, uh, if we want to create an interactive plot, so we needed to use those column data sources and convert these data frame frames into those, uh, those column data sources. Again, to save some time, I just copy and paste the code from the website and put it here. So we need to make a copy uh, of the metro and drop the geometry and just create the column data source of these. So the metro, the points and the grid. So now we have these uh, data sources, column data sources that we can use in Bokeh to plot them. Okay. Uh, so the first thing that we want to plot is, as we are taking a look at the, or the final output, is of course we want to plot the grid and we want to use some color palette to actually, so we want to specify the colors for our uh, uh, 
uh, vinyl product, so the map. So what we want to use there, so in Bokeh there are certain color palettes available. So let's Google Bokeh uh, palette this. So here we can find out, so there are different kind of color palettes available. Uh, and you can basically read from this site and find out different kind of nice colors that you can use. Uh, what I want to use is uh, this kind of red, yellow, blue. Uh, I will shortly explain how you read this. Red, yellow, blue. So this one. Uh, so basically how you read this uh, feature is basically that if you have three uh, classes in your data or you have basically defined like three different uh, classes these are the colors that you will get if you have four these are the colors and so on so you can basically see the whole range of of different uh, color uh, bars that are available uh, in our case as we used um, ba, 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 how many classes did we use uh, actually we used quite many because we have all the travel times but actually we don't have so many values defined in different uh, groups so what I will use here is that I use this 11 different classes to specify the colors in, in our in our data I think I yeah so as we can see in the larger classes there are only really few few different uh, cells in there and most of them are in these smaller smaller classes so anyway so let's use that uh, as the color palette so what we want to do is that we want to from bokeh dot palettes import and now what I want to import is this red yellow BU blue uh, like this and basically uh, after uh, this uh, name so red yellow blue uh, I specify like what is the color scheme that I want to use so I want to use the number 11 which is the last one so use these colors to to produce the map so 11 is the number and let's say that import that as palette so let's do it like this let's see if I can actually put like more like 18 yeah it doesn't work so it's only until 11 yep so that's uh, what we want to import then one thing is that we want to import this kind of lock color mapper function from here I will soon explain a bit what that is used for uh, so uh, now we have the palette important so the colors and this color mapper so how we can basically uh, specify the colors is that we basically take uh, these values and, and create this kind of color mapper that basically takes the input values and specifies the, the, the color for, for the final plot so we need to initialize this color mapper so let's say color mapper equals to lock color mapper and what is the palette that we want to use well it is the one that we imported so this one and now we have this we take some logarithmic let's take a look okay lock color mapper um, ok 
categorical. So there are different kind of mappers available that are used for mapping values from one ridge or space to another. So this is color mapper linear log. So this is what we are basically using. So it takes um, takes the input values and converts them to natural logarithm scale that are used to produce the colors. Uh, details that you don't really need to understand or know more deeply, but that's how it works. Then as a final thing, we want to actually create the figure. So in initialize um, the figure. So again, we create a variable called P and we say that figure, let's give it some title. So travel times with public transport to central railway station. Now we have that initialized. Now we want to plot the grid. So now we want to actually plot those, plot those polygons and give the colors based on that color palette that we used. So how you can uh, plot these kind of polygons that are basically areas is that we have this patches uh, kind of object. So again, we use the p dot and patch is patches. So there can be only one patch, but we have plenty of patches. So we use that p dot patches. And again, we specify what is the x, what is the y co uh, coordinates. So those are the columns where those are. Then we specify the source. So I copy pasted this, but what we did was that we basically created the column data source from the grid of travel time data. And we specify that the source is this G source, so grid source. Uh, then what we can do is that we can specify what is the fill color? So we could specify only like one color here, but of course, as we have the values, uh, we specify, this is a bit uh, hackish, but how we can specify the color for, for those <coughs> polygons is that we specify from which field should we take the information from? Well, uh, we take the information from the public transport RTT and we don't want to actually um, color the, the actual travel times. We want to color the, the classes that we actually classify. So the user defined classes so, so that each value are either in, in class from zero to five minutes, five minutes to 10 minutes and so on. So that is the field that we want to use, so the column that we want to use. And then one thing that we want to do is that we want to transform those values into this logarithmic scale so that the colors come, uh, come from this logarithmic color mapper. So the actual the travel time classes are transformed into numbers that can be assigned as, as, as color values. So that is what this, this does. So uh, now we have that available. So now we have specified the coordinates, the source and the fill color. Uh, what we can still do, uh, so I just show you some good parameters that are available. So we can in a similar manner as in, in pandas, we can specify the alpha. So the transparency, well, let's say that it's 0 0.95. So there is 9% of transparency. Uh, we can specify the line color. So what is the color of the polygon lines? It could be, well, let's specify it as black. It could be white or gray or whatever. And let's specify the line width of those polygon 
uh, exteriors that we have to be 0 0.05 so we don't actually want to have really thick uh, lines in those uh, polygon uh, polygon uh, exteriors so uh, this is how we can now create uh, patches so we specified the color and some other parameters and now we have this glue render so that kind of object came out and now we should have that information in in this uh, bokeh figure now we want to plot uh, the using the same figure so let's plot the uh, or add the metro on top of the grid so how we do the kind of how you can uh, add objects or features or layers on top of each other is that we didn't save this at this point so now we again use the same figure and uh, that we initialized originally so before saving we use the same p so that figure object and we say that okay create a multi-line uh, from that metro uh, object so again x and y and then the source so now we use the m source so which is the metro uh, column data source so m source is like that color is red so let's put it the line to be red and let's specify that the line width is two so now we put that on ah, i'm really poor at getting this parameter name right so now we have the multi-line on top of that grid and let's finally add the points before saving so again i use the same p uh, figure uh, object and let's say that the circle create a circle object and then specify the x and y columns uh, specify the size to be tree source to be uh, the point source which is here so that one and let's say that the color is black so we should have black points and now we have that and of course we want to save the output so save the figure and alt fb equals to and let's put it in the same place I want to have it in here and now let's give it some name let's call it travel time map.html so that will be the file and then we just save our figure p and alt of p yep and if everything goes right now it takes a bit more time but this is much more faster or it's much faster to create these plots than these matplotlib plots uh, and now we have this travel time map HTML and when double clicking it let's see what do we have well it seems to be more or less looking the same as, as before uh, so we have the points we have the colors uh, of based on that travel time information from that one column then we have the metro line actually the metro stops here as well and some uh, uh, railway stations and basically what you can see that as we are having the travel times to central railway station so these uh, stations railway stations so travel times from those kind of pop up nicely in in this map so this is how we can create uh, nice interactive maps that you can zoom in and, and so on 
so you can basically uncheck wheel zoom and so on and of course you could add interactivity into here and, and so on and add more layers if you will and fairly straightforward you need to kind of remember a few steps uh, when doing uh, these interactive maps with with Poke. so first of all read the data uh, with geopandas for example uh, convert the geometries into coordinates a list of coordinates and then basically create a column data source that you can use to uh, create the actual actual map with poke so that's that's it uh, so what we have here still is that if you're interested so there is as i said materials how to deal with multi um, multi geometries and basically it shows how to create create this kind of map that is on top of here uh, top of this page with interactivity and so on and so in this uh, legend that is on top of this uh, as a last thing which shouldn't take too long uh, I want to show you how you can share these files on GitHub. So basically what we have here uh, and what is on the exercise is that actually I'm going to open that exercise now so that you can see it. So what we have in the exercise 5 folder is that uh, we have this folder inside this repository called docs and basically what we have inside here is that we have this index.md and this is kind of an entrance uh, page for, for the maps uh, and basically what we have here is that you should in the exercise add a link to the map so link to these files that you produce in the exercise the HTML file so you you should add it using this kind of uh, syntax in, in markdown uh, and this is an example what this would basically produce uh, let's see if it works so basically that link takes you into a site that basically shows just this map that was also shown into the in the uh, course materials uh, so how you can actually transform and and share these uh, share these interactive maps in in github is that you have this um, github pages uh, kind of I don't know it's a feature of, of, of uh, github and basically in the settings so you should have you should be able to see the settings in your uh, own uh, repository so in your own exercise repositories when you have accepted the classroom so there is this github pages uh, site and it basically have possibility to use this docs folder to actually produce the pages in 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 github so if i basically choose this docs folder and say save now it said that github pages source saved and basically your site is ready to be published at this page and now what we actually see here it looks really similar to what actually is the uh, course web page of our um, our course so all the GIS automating GIS processes dot github dot io slash 2017 so actually our web course site is run by this github pages uh, and they are done in a similar manner so what this does is that well this is really ugly but basically uh, this is 
basically going into this uh, HTML file. So whenever you are going into some website, you are most probably going into or accessing a file called index.html. And what does this look like? Well, there's a quite a lot of stuff in here, but basically it has uh, some HTML code and they are basically the text that I added here and so on. And then you have the actual plot inside here. So we actually have the data uh, to produce the, the plot and so on underneath here. So in the exercise six, what you should do is indeed to kind of create interactive map and add a link to this uh, index.md file to that page and it should be basically looking something like this and you should activate the uh, github pages from from here to do it uh, there is better explanation in the <laughs> course materials that I just gave uh, but this is the basic idea how you can actually create create web pages and, and share them online so there is some yeah, there's some information here that you can you can use to do it. Uh, so I just now want to still go through the exercise five. As I said in the in the beginning, uh, the idea of the exercise five is to just create one really nice looking static map uh, and one nice looking interactive map using whatever data that we have used here so you just create use some uh, imagination and, and try to create as inform informatic map as you can with the tools that have been provided for you and the skills that you have had you can do some analysis if you want the main idea is to really test and, and and try out different visualizations and play with colors and, and, and different par parameters transparency and so on to try to make it uh, aesthetic one uh, the problem zero is I have a this midterm feedback form I would appreciate to get some feedback from you now as we have been going uh, more than halfway through the course so the basic same stuff that we asked in the previous uh, period uh, in, in GeoPython so the same questions but now concerning the older GIS part and yeah and there is some instructions for storing the map so you should as I said uh, save your maps in this docs folder so in here and add a link to this index.md file just like this so that's all you need to do do now in the exercise five um, yeah unless you don't have any any questions I guess we are we are quite good to go um, just there is a another set of tutorial showing how you can create interactive maps on leaflet just to show you this is not needed uh, it's enough if you go through the pocket stuff but you can create quite cool stuff with the uh, volume as well so here for example we have a map where you have the population density we have some points and you can actually there are these they are clusters like this automatically so and then you can click on them and you have information and when you click on the buttons you get the address information and so on so it's yeah so it's something that you can do 
with with Poke, and there is some script showing you how you can actually do that and create the cluster marker cluster, which is basically just this that it clusters all the points on, on of the map. And actually, what we are using here is that we have this kind of map tiles. So this is a tile provider. So if you have a base map in your graph, so they are usually called tiles. So these are basically PNG uh, images that are fetched from a server of this tile provider and basically visualized. And you can then visualize your own data on top of that map. So this is a kind of extra, but if you're interested, you can take a